And here we go, our main event of the evening. John Gotti the third in the black and gold trunks taking on Nick Alley in the green. Three rounds in the welterweight division live from CES 61 at the tent at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Michael Parenti once again joined by my broadcast partner Joe Lozon. And we're in for a good one tonight, Joe. A real big step up fight, big opportunity for both sides as they close out our show in style. John Gotti, of course, coming in with a perfect 5-0 record. He's got four wins by first round knockout. Went the distance in his last bout. Nick Alley comes in at 6-3. and three. He's won three in a row. Very streaky fighter who right now is on a hot streak. So something to look forward to and something to watch out for if and when this bout does progress. Gotti's throwing some heaters right off the bat. <clears throat> as he's accustomed to do. Gotti, a fast starter and an equally fast finisher as we've seen in the past. Tries to snap that overhand right. And like we said, the tools are all there. The 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 the. the the amateur background is there. It's a big opportunity for him against a tough, dangerous fighter like Ali. And of course, the big opportunity for Nick Ali, full-time mechanic, works as a day job. This is a chance where if you beat a guy like John Gotti, it just it puts you in the conversation, right? Sure. I mean, it, it's headlines all over the world for, for that kind of a victory. So you can see the opportunity, and you can see the trajectory that both fighters could take here if they come away with this victory. A lot at stake for both sides. So many careers are made off of like one big win. <clears throat> and you beat one big name guy and it can do so much for you. Gotti needs to be careful, he's, he's setting up a triangle. Not too much trouble just yet, he's gotta be aware. And Gotti, as we mentioned, kind of found himself in some precarious positions in that last fight against Marco Serreta. Came through each one, showed a lot of poise, showed the ability to bounce back, not panic, which is more important than anything else, because he had never really been tested like that as a pro, and I was impressed with how he came through it. And I think he's going to face some situations tonight. If this fight, in fact, goes as long as we expect it to go, I think he'll face a couple of those. And, and it will be interesting to see how he responds again second time around. I like how you brought up the fact that he didn't panic mm -hmm. in his last fight because there's so many times people don't understand like how like you have to make like a split-second decision. Right. And you go left, and you get safety. And you go right, and you make it way worse. <laughs> and like sometimes like you get caught up, and you don't. sometimes you're not as well-versed. You don't know which way to go, so you just have to make a decision. And sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. But Gotti did a great job in his last fight. Gotti trying to work that rib cage previously against Ali. Soften him up a bit here with two and a half to go in the opening round. So Nick Alley's using his left arm as an overhook. He's going to try to bring his right shin inside Gotti's arm on his right side. <clears throat> try to set up a triangle. And this is not a spot where Ali's uncomfortable. He's got five wins by submission, so he's been in this position before where he's had to win fights, whether on his back or on the ground. Here comes that triangle. He's trying to set it up. Try and fight his, his foot right in. Gotti's doing a good job of controlling the ankle. Mm -hmm. Gotti trying to control, push that foot back down. Two minutes to go in round one. Early action on the ground in this opening bout, or opening round rather. Ali's doing a pretty good job of not taking damage on the ground. You know, generally speaking, guy on top is winning the fight, you know, but Gotti's not been able to deal too much damage while he's on top. You're right. It could be two different avenues there, right? 100%. If you're the fighter on the top, you're either wailing away and landing some shots, or you're just kind of controlling the fight. And this is a situation where Gotti's controlling, but not really inflicting a lot of damage just yet. If you're the guy on the bottom, you don't want either one of those to happen, but no. you'd much rather have a guy control <laughs> you than, you know, beat the crap out of you. It's been a long time, as we mentioned, since Ali's been in the cage. February of 2019 to be exact. And then of course, the COVID pandemic shutting things down in March. It canceled Ali's bout against Marcus Davis, which was scheduled for March. So you're talking almost 19 months, more than 19 months really since he's been there. Gotti breaks free for a second, lands a couple of overhands. That's gonna suck, you have a year off, you get geared up for like this this big, big sure. fight against a guy like Marcus Davis, this UFC veteran, this guy's really good, and then worldwide pandemic. pandemic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you kind of think at that point, what else could possibly go wrong? But a nice opportunity here on the flip side for him against John Guy the third, a big showcase bout, again, for both sides, here at CS61. Final minute of round number one, this one's scheduled for three in the welterweight division. Here comes that triangle, he's trying to set up a triangle on the opposite side now. Second time now where Ali's trying to work the submission. Final 30 seconds. The triangle's there. Yeah, Gotti's got to get some good posture. He's, he's got pretty good posture right now. He, he, I think he'll be okay. He broke it. Gotti's a strong kid. He's a former bodybuilder. Actually weighed 250 pounds and, of course, all muscle wow. at one point in his life. So 
When you talk about being able to have the leverage to pick somebody yep. off the ground like that in triangle, it. he's the guy that can do it for sure. So 250 <clears> down to, you know, fighting 170. 170 pounds. Imagine cutting 80 pounds, Joe. A lot of it muscle, of course. I don't like cutting 8 pounds. I'm like 80. <laughs> Round one in the books between John Gotti and Nick Alley. This one, of course, scheduled for three, our main event at CES 61. Joe, uh, takeaways from that opening round there, what'd you see? Uh, so Gotti did a good job. He controlled for the most part. You know, Alley was trying to set up a triangle from the bottom, so I'm sure that I, I think Gotti's corner right now is telling him, like, you know, make sure you're keeping an eye on the triangle. You gotta make sure you defend. You gotta keep good posture. Um, you know, but it was, a, it was a good round. You know, Gotti did a good job controlling. And certainly Gotti's ground game cannot be underestimated, and uh, he has shown the ability to, to fight off his back and to control the game or control the fight on the ground in the past, most notably against Marco Soreda. But Gotti, of course, is a natural striker and wants to be in the center of the cage trading some shots, and we'll see if he can let his hands go in this round and avoid the takedown scenario where he's now forced into a different mindset, right? Because, Joe, once you kind of get taken down, the game plan is sort of gets put on the back burner, and now it's a whole different set of plans and, and, and moves to get yourself back into that position. It really changes everything. You know, wrestling is really the most important aspect of a fight because if you have the better wrestling, you can dictate if the fight is on the feet or if it's on the ground. Generally, you don't have an advantage in both spots, right? You generally go, oh, this guy's a better striker, so I have to take him down. Or, you know, I'm, you know, better on, the, on my feet, so I need to keep the fight up. So wrestling is generally the most important aspect of the fight. Ali coming out firing in round two. Took a shot upstairs with the with the head kick. Now Gotti's got him pressed against the cage. So Gotti tried a little uh, front leg kick there to start the round, a little bit of a distance finder, maybe to try to keep Ali at bay for possibly shooting for a takedown. Looks like Gotti trying to get that hook in, maybe go for this takedown, and he gets it. Both fighters scrambling back to their feet, 30 seconds into round number one, again with a head kick attempt upstairs by Ali. Now a nice shot to the body, going back upstairs on Gotti, again with the kick. Ali's showing a nice repertoire here, a little bit of a diverse attack. He's had a very good diverse attack. Some wrestling, some kicks, some punches. There it is again, right? Rear leg, front leg, goes to the body, then goes upstairs. You really can't just get locked into one thing, Joe, especially against a guy like Gotti. It's hard, because sometimes people get tunnel vision. Like, they try to do just one thing. The guys that do best are guys that vary their attack. They come low, they come high, they work in a takedown, they force a clinch, they try to snap your head down, they try knee you in the head, they just they keep it coming all the time. It seems like Gotti wants to be aggressive here, but Ali's really pressing the issue, and it seems like controlling the center of the cage here early in this round and not letting Gotti or allowing Gotti to charge in like we're used to seeing him in the past. I feel like Gotti in general has more of like a boxer's approach to striking. You know, he's, he's more heavy handed with his, with his fists, and Ali seems to be a little bit more diverse with the, the, the kicks. There's a nice short right cross attempt by Gotti, then he shot in for the potential takedown attempt here at the 309 mark. Round number two of a scheduled three. This is our main event, CES MMA 61. Live from the tent at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Warwick, Rhode Island. We're bringing you the action live on Fight Pass. Michael Parenti once again joined by Joe Lozon. We got John Guy the third in the black and gold trunks. Those are the Rocky Balboa, Rocky II, Apollo Creed rematch trunks. And Nick Alley in the black and the lime green. So I just got to get a little bit more aggressive when he's in that clinch there. You can't just stay there and let the guy hang on your head. Oh, God, he's going to be careful. He's going to get dumped. He's going like to get dumped. Ali trying to flip him over the top. Shake him, shake him, shake him. Gotti's got decent posture here. Ali's got both hands on the canvas. It looks like the referee telling Gotti to get that foot off the cage. So Gotti's in a bad way right now because he, his, his center of gravity is so far forward, he can't pull himself back. Ali's just going to kind of shake a little bit, and gravity's going to do the work. And he's probably going to land on top of Gotti because he can't put his hooks in. He's, he's too heavy. We'll see forward. where this one ends up here. I'm kind of waiting for the boom to be lowered at some point. Two minutes to go here in round two. I As think, you said, uh, I think we're going to see Ali reach up and grab on the back of Gotti's head and kind of pull him forward. He'll get dumped. Looks like he's trying with that right hand, Joe. Yep. Yeah, there it is. It's Soft right landing. Over. Yep. But an opportunity for some ground and pound. And it looks like Gotti might be cut in the forehead. There's blood. It's somebody's blood. Not sure who, yep. but it looks like it might be Gotti who sustained a cut. I can't tell you it either, but. Yeah. Someone, you wonder if uh, perhaps someone. he got clipped on the way in or, or what might have happened. But it'll be interesting to look at that going forward. We haven't had any real major cuts tonight in either of these previous six bouts. Yep. It's been a slow night for the cut men. Cut man. Cut man, rather. 
that blood also behind the ear, but it looks like that may be over the left eye of Gotti. I'm kind of just speculating here just from the view we have. But in any event, Gotti now in a tough spot on his back here with one minute to go in round number two. Much better round for Alley. You gotta think if it continues like this for the rest of the round, you're probably one and one, going to the third. Makes for an exciting main event. You always love a uh, winner take all round. Yeah, right. right? Going into the finale, it's kind of like the game seven of MMA. Yep. Final minute now for Gotti, who's gotta do something quickly here to turn the tide in this second round. So right now, Nick Alley in control. And now you start talking about if you do go into that scenario where it's 1-1 one, one going into round three, you start talking yep. about game plans and who's going to do what and how you're going to come out. Yep. And those first 30 seconds of a round can really yep. decide how it goes. I'm looking at it now it, from this angle. It almost looks like the blood might be from Nick Alley's left elbow. It, right. It's hard <laughs> to tell because it, it's it's obviously mostly oh, no, on Gotti's forehead. It's Gotti's forehead. It's Gotti's forehead. It's it like looks the like the left eye, left right, eye, Joe? Yep. Right above the left eye. Yep. And this is where the cut man comes into play. Scott Ream going to have his work cut out for him in between rounds. And that's a big factor, Joe, right? Patching that up going into the third round. It's the most important right. round of the fight. You don't want any distractions that you don't need. Over the eye is the worst spot, too. You know, under the eye, not a big deal. You know, it's not going to get into your mm -hmm. eye, you know, but over the eye is a big deal. Round two in the books here. Big round for Nick Alley, and we see Scott Ream go right to work on John Gotti's cut. If you're going to have anybody work a cut, it's going to be Scott Ream. He's the best in the business. Good enough for the UFC. Good enough for anybody. Good enough for CES MMA 61, that's for sure. So, Joe, take us through round two here. This was a big round for Nick Alley. Yo, what did he do differently in that round that he didn't really get to do in round one? So I, I think he changed up his attack a little bit more. You know, like in the first round, he was kind of controlled. He was kind of on his back. We talked a little earlier how, like, you really don't want to fight from your back. You know, you're trying to get up most of the time. You know, you don't see a lot of submissions off your back. Uh, in the second round, he did a much better job. He was attacking from a lot of different places. He was throwing kicks. He was throwing punches. He was clinching. He was wrestling. Uh, you know, and it just uh, really it came down to a scramble. You know, Gotti tried to get it on his yep. back, and he just dumped him off and landed a couple elbows, opened up a cut. Yeah, you're seeing the replay here where Gotti kind of just got pulled back down to the canvas. Like you said, Ali was going to grab him by the back of the head, pull him down, and that's where he really started landing some of those short right hands. Gotti, though, appeared to be cut before that, even on the way down, so yep. he must have sustained that cut somewhere in the scrap or that clinch against Could the cage. Could have been a clash of heads or right. whatever. It's hard. We don't really know how they scored or how it was, but in any event, it looks like if it's our unofficial scorecard between you and I, I'd say 1-1 one, one going into this yeah. final round. Yep. And this really makes these final five minutes here all exciting. We'll see if John Gotti can do what he's done best in his career, which is let his hands go and strike. He's got five minutes to turn the tide here and, and possibly build a victory. Nice leg kick there by Ali. Just sent Gotti crashing into the canvas, but he pops right back up. So here we are, third and final round of a schedule of three. Nice right hand by Alley. Really that right one hands. really caught Gotti off guard. And now Alley takes advantage of the little break there and pushes Gotti back against the cage. Got his hands locked. And a big slam by Alley. Takedown. Tough spot here now for Gotti, Joe. This is, this is a, yeah, this is hard. So Gotti just made what I think is kind of like a classic mistake of like, he again, he gave up his back. He should have maintained the overhook, but he gave up his back. Now he's got Alley on his back. Not the ideal start for Gotti, who got clipped with the right, got taken down, and now he's going to try to fight his way off his back again. Alley trying to maybe try to lock in a rear naked choke here. He's not going to have anything yeah. going at the moment, but he's in the position at least planting the seed, so to speak, here with four minutes to go. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind being where John Gotti is right now because the fence is to the back of, mm -hmm. of Alley, so he can't really extend the way he'd like to. He turned into him. Nice job there by Gotti to spin back out. Now careful. we'll see. Here comes that triangle again. That triangle attempt here again by Alley. Got both legs around Gotti's head. He's in a bad way. Gotti's certainly in a trouble spot here. I think he's in trouble here. And it's unlike anything we saw in the Laredo fight. That was a tough fight, but he really wasn't in any pressing danger here like he is now. Alley's got, he's got the triangle locked in. He's going to hang on the head. Gotti's going to have a really tough time getting out of this. And a lot of time on the clock, too, here. Three and a half to go. Time really on Nick Alley's side if you if, really if break Ali it down. If Alley is patient, he'll probably get the triangle. If he tries to switch off to an arm lock or something, then it'll probably give Gotti second life. But if he stays here and hangs on the head, it's going to be really hard. Well, can Nick Alley pull off the upset? Gotti He's does sneak out. out of it, so that's a big transition for John Gotti. And now we'll just see if it comes down to pure strength here, Joe. Well, Ali, you just used a lot of energy trying to finish that off. He might, Gotti might get dumped off again. Gotti looked like he was trying this to take his back. This is not quite no. as bad this time. He's not quite as high. He's still gonna not in the best spot, but he's able to bail off. Gotti this time slides off to the side. He's got Ali against the cage. I think it would be in Gotti's best interest to sort of press back and try to get back out and get some separation. But again, yep. he's back down to the canvas. He's trying to force the back control. 
Alley popped out. <coughs> now side control for Alley. Cut does not look like it's a factor right now, at least for the moment. We have two and a half to go in the final round. Not right now, but sometimes like when you're laying in your back like this, now you have the blood's going to try to pool in your eye. Like he's, he's looking off to his left, so it's not as bad. Oh, there it is now. Yeah, and it's actually going to the back of his head, yep. like you said. So it's fortunate. It's away from the eye. Sometimes, good for sometimes Gotti. it will pull into your eye, which is no good. 2.09 to go here. Real uh, red zone action right now, if you want to call it yep. that, for John Gotti. Sure. Got to get off his feet and do something here in these final two minutes to try to salvage this bout, because right now it looks like it's leaning toward Nick Alley. Yeah, you know, Gotti definitely is not winning this round so far. You know, he needs to get back up to his feet and make, some, make something happen. A little short elbow there by Alley. <coughs> It's certainly a different class of grappler that Gotti is facing tonight, and it's showing here in these last two rounds. But Gotti's been known to pull out some quick finishes in the past. Still has time, 90 seconds. Has to probably make a move now, Joe, or at least some point in the next few seconds here he's to try to get back to his feet. 100%. He's got to try and pop up. He's got to get that left arm as an underhook. He's got to pop up to his feet, get up on his right hand. It's hard, though, because now we're, you know, we're in the third round. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, and it hasn't been an easy fight. No. It's been back and forth. Much, you know? Yeah, much easier said than done maybe in the first round as opposed Always. to the third yep. when you've been in through a grinding war like this. Fatigue yep. is clearly setting in here. And, but Gotti won the first round, but then Ali got the best of him in the second. And now, you know, it's been mostly Ali in the third. I mean, listen, we said Ali's strength was grappling, and he's shown it in the last two rounds. He's showing yep. it right here. Final 50 seconds here. John Gotti in some trouble. If you're Ali, you'd surely love to hang on here right now 100%. for dear life and just, yep. just let it ride out. Yep. But if you're Gotti, of course, you've got to make a quick move. Ali could use his right knee right here and, pu and push down on Gotti's elbow and get his arm free. But if he, if he doesn't get his arm out, he could get in trouble too. A lot can happen here in these final 30 seconds. Looks like we're going to go to the cards, barring anything crazy or cataclysmic here in this final. Gotti had his arm, but he's lost it now. If you're Ali, you must have to just, you know, just hang on. Gotti just trying to get to his feet, but Ali gets him and presses him back down for the final 10 seconds. And now, yeah, Ali just staying busy with some right hands and lefts. He's going to go to the cards, but it's definitely an Ali third round. You know, it depends how you, you know, who really won the second round is what you got to think about. Right. You know, did, like, did we just, you know, kind of, did we like the idea of it being, you know, one and one going to the third? Or was right. you know, the did second we, round? Did we talk ourselves into yes. that, or was that really the case? Because it's a nice idea. It's a nice idea. Oh, sure. it's like it's, it comes, all comes down to this. It all comes down to this third round, you know? Nick Alley's corner certainly celebrating like they've won the fight. Yep. I, I, if, if you had to ask me right now, I'd score it 2-1 to one Alley. Uh, we'll see what the scorecards say, but definitely a much stronger performance toward the end for Nick Alley, yep. who used that grappling to his advantage. Uh, you know, we saw in the last fight, John Gotti, certainly uh, no slouch on the ground. He showed some tremendous ground game against Marcos Lareda, but just a different story tonight, Joe. For sure. You know, I, I think Marcos Lareda was like more like hunting like specific submissions, mm -hmm. whereas tonight Nick Alley was more so just, you know, grappling a little bit and then landing good elbows. Like you can see here, he's landing some good elbows. He's landing, you know, that was the very end of the third round, but he was kind of beating him. It kind of was in between stages. You know, he wasn't trying to just grapple him. He was trying to, you know, fight him, but on the ground. And that kind of performance by Ali and, and the, just the pressure that he puts on you when he's got you on the ground, it really just wears you down, right? Like, it doesn't look like a lot on camera, but how yep. grinding is that? When you're on the bottom of that, it, it, mentally exhausting, physically exhausting, it all just seems to add up. So it, it's hard because you want to try and get up. You want to have this not happen to you, but every time you try to do something, you get you know, punished for it. It's like, oh, you try to get up a little bit, you get punched in the face. You try to get up a little bit, the guy drops all his weight on you. It's like, it's just like you're, you're constantly losing life. You're constantly losing energy. So Nick Alley's strong performance in the last two rounds. Again, though, as we mentioned, that middle round could be the swing round to see how it goes on the cards. We're going to get the scores in just a moment. But again, great showing by both fighters. Everything that we expected in this main event, it was that kind of back-and-forth grind, that back-and-forth battle where there were little moments here and there where the the momentum shifted either direction. You saw yep. Gotti have his moments, and Nick Alley, of course, had his moments as well. And uh, could be in line here for a possible strong finish and upset victory for Nick Alley. We're going to see yep. what the cards say, but definitely a great performance. And again, this is a guy who, by the way, came off uh, almost two-year layoff in Nick Alley to yep. go out there and uh, show what he did tonight. So we're going to get the official word. Now let's send it up to our cage announcer, Adam Palazzo, who has the final scores. <laughs> Sean Flanagan and Paul Asmir have the fight 29-28.
Judge Nick Mahmood has the fight 29-27 for your winner by unanimous decision, Nick J.C. Ali! There it is, 29-28 on two scorecards and 29-27 on the third. Nick Alley with the unanimous decision victory. So it looked like maybe a 10-8 round there, Joe. Yeah, it, it's always weird. So it's supposed to be a 10-point must system, mm -hmm. right? So someone should have had 30, you know, or it should have been, you know, three 10 rounds. And right. Someone <coughs> messed up. And perhaps that third <laughs> round maybe was the one where, you yep. know, and you don't necessarily – it, it, scoring the 10-8 round in MMA is a lot harder than boxing because you don't have the yep. knockdowns to give you the automatic score. But in any event... Uh, I didn't think any of those rounds were 10-8, though. No, I would agree with you on that. The closest may have been the final round, but in any event, uh, Nick Alley gets the big victory. Uh, upset win over John Gotti, who's snapping uh, his five-fight win streak. And now, Nick Alley's won four in a row. So perhaps, as we talked about, on the hot streak. Mike. We're going to send it up to Adam Palazzo, who has our winner, Nick Alley. Thanks, Mike. I'm here with our winner, Nick Alley. Nick, man, you fought the guy nobody wanted to fight, the guy that knocks everybody out. You took him the distance. You got the win. What's going through your mind right now? Um, obviously, I'm just super happy. Um, I had the best camp that I've ever had. Everything went off without a hitch. They had tried to set up this fight between John and I a couple times in the past. Either I was coming off injury or I had already had a fight. I knew at some point that we were both going to fight. I mean... I have six fights, seven fights. Out before today, I had six finishes, five submissions, one TKO. So I knew at some point, both of us being studs, we were going to fight just because we like to fucking fight. Sorry. What, what was it about John Gotti, the matchup, that you liked going into this? Because he's tough as nails. I mean, I don't know. I know Joe knows a ton about jujitsu. Those triangles were nasty. I don't know how he lived through that. That was crazy. Because I could hear him in there, going, ah, and I was just like, Jesus, this guy is like, you couldn't choke him out. That's why after that point, I didn't even bother. There was a couple of submissions I felt I maybe could have jumped to, but I was like, there's no point being reckless. This is a close fight, so just hold position and continue to do damage. Speaking of jumping, a win like this can certainly jumpstart your career, as our broadcast partners mentioned earlier. Uh, yeah. Right now, you got to be on cloud nine, but the future yeah. is bright. Yeah, so, uh, and that's, that's the goal. I mean, I said I wanted to just keep rolling as quick as I could. I fought in February. I had a quick, like, minute and 30-second submission. Um, I was trying to fight again on March, then COVID happened to everybody, then we kind of got backed up a little bit, but I'm feeling the best I ever have. I'm in the best shape that I've ever been in. I'm just ready to keep this ball rolling, you know what I mean? It's all the way up. Well, congratulations, my man. Savor this victory. You deserve this one tonight. A hard-fought victory for Nick Alley. I'm going to send it up to the broadcast booth one more time to Mike Parenti and Joe Lozon.